Yeah. Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another video of ours. Today is the first division team of the season video. Gavin Woods is here. Keith Ryan is here. Sad Bray fan, apparently. And Sean Lean is here. So uh, basically the three guys have come up with a team between them. They've gone with 4-4-2. So we're going to go through the teams, the, the team basically, and through the players. And uh, I might throw in a few players that they left out and see what their thoughts are there. But uh we we'll start off in goal. He's went for David Harrington, Cork City. 14 clean sheets this season. The most clean sheets in the league. I think this was probably one of the easiest ones on the list, Gavin, was it? Yeah, I suppose. So, like, I was never going to look past him myself anyway, Keith, to be fair, you know. And and as I said, um, you know, I said well, that was one of the reasons why they won the league this year. I think he was the difference, to be fair to him. Um, so, for me, I was going to pick him anyway in that sense. He's just been superb for City this year and um, like if he does leave and go to Everton, like I can understand that completely. You know, he's a super keeper, and you know I wish him all the best if he does leave. Yeah, he's o he's only twenty two to be fair as well, and uh, I think it was the fact that in some of the big games, Gavin he made some important saves, didn't he, this season? Yeah, yeah. I was saying that I think was it saying it earlier. I think I was saying to Sean and Keith Ryan as well about I think it was a one. I think it was at the Watford game. I think and. Uh, you know, just wanted an example, but I remember another game, the game we went down to Treaty down in Markets Field. I don't know, we won the game quite easily enough, but he pulled off two or three saves. You know, you know, sometimes you, you you also see a very good keeper when they're not being tested for 80 or 90 minutes, and then all of a sudden they have to kind of wake up for one for a better word. And he pulled off two or three magnificent saves, and that he pulled them out of the uh, out of the bag there, and um, I think that's the sign of a good keeper as well. When, when other than the games when you're being tested, but the games when you're not really up to much, but when you're called on, that you can still um, put in the same shift that you that you would if you were playing against like Galway or Waterford, you know, where you're tested more. Um, but uh, he's a super keeper, and you know, his attitude is right, and you know, he he's 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 going in the right places anyway. Yeah, I should mention as well before we move on that we're going to name our player of the year and our manager of the year as well. We'll go through his individually to pick them and then we'll come out with a winner. Uh, Sean, you went with Tunmisa Sobwale at right back. Um, your thoughts there, basically? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm a big fan of uh, Tunmisa. He's really, um, you know, uh, really loves to play for the club and uh, um, he offers a lot going forward. Uh he did make one or two mistakes defensively throughout the course of the season, but uh, he's got the size and strength to make up for that. Uh, you know, he, um, you know, the athleticism as well for a big guy, he's mm. pretty fast. So you, it's everything you want in a fullback, really. And uh, he won, you know, an important, he won a huge battle there, you know, because we're lucky enough we have two really good right backs, Dara Power and himself. And uh, he won that battle and uh, deservedly so, I think. Yeah, three goals and three assists for him this season as well. And he's really kicking on. He's 23 as well. A left back is went for Dylan Barnett. Three goals, eight assists this season, Keith. That's pretty good. Longford Town. Yeah, uh, I think Dylan, he, he kind of gets a nod over a couple of players. And, you know, there was a couple of others mentioned and stuff. But Dylan's kind of an all-rounder. He can play centre-half. He can play left wing. He can play left back where he's played most of the season. Now, unfortunately for Dylan and Longford, he's been... Injured for a um, couple of games leading up to the end of the season and the playoffs, um, which is unfortunate. But uh, all through his career and uh, when he was with Bray, he was he was set piece master. Really, he was setting goals up, corners, corner routines, stuff like that. So, um, and he can hit a good free kick as well. So, um, you know, you you're probably going to mention the players we we were going to cover as well. Uh, at left back, but um, yeah, Dylan Burnett. Um, given to get into the playoffs and given his all round versatility, we think uh, he'd be the, the good option at left back. Yeah, there's a couple of contenders here, to be fair. I mean, Keith O'Connor for a start. Uh, Gavin, you obviously know him well. Kevin, hmm? Kevin. Kevin O'Connor, sorry, Keith O'Connor. Kevin, yeah, Keith O'Connor might be in it next year. Kevin yeah. O'Connor, rather. You obviously know him, Gavin, well, you know, so um, obviously he missed out and uh. Yeah, I suppose he's had a good season as well, but it's hard to go against Dylan Barnett, to be fair, isn't it? Yeah, and like to to be fair to Kevin as well, like he had a, he he's had a good season. Um, like I said, I I gave Ron and Hurley an awful uh, to an off last year in some of the games there, but they they lacked a bit of experience, and Kevin brought that back this this year. Um, I I, I just think when 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 City play when City play three five two formation and Kevin O'Connor is the left of the wing backs. 
he he gets cut out very easily. He's not he's not great in that position because he, he's lost that yard of pace that he had years ago. Uh, when they play a, a flat four four two, he's an excellent left back. Um, but definitely, like when it comes to when like for example, they're the last game of the season in spray. There, Keith might have seen it, but they took him off and they brought in Barbary instead of him. And the game changed in that sense because they were playing the three five two with him as the wing back, and Barbary offers that youthfulness and the speed. And uh, you know, I just think that's 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 the difference this year with City is that they needed that uh, more than because they play that more than the flat back four. So I think that's where you know Kevin's had a good season, but definitely when it came to you know when they're playing that wing back system, it, didn't, it just didn't suit him. Like you know, but mm. but in all fairness, a great servant to the club, like. Mm. it's funny because they're actually seem to be more contenders at left back than at right back for some reason because like Dara Power is one of them Sean as well I know at the start of the season he didn't really get in the team much under Morris but um, they decided eventually when he got into the team he actually moved to left back and we all know him really as a right back it was yeah it was a brave decision from um, Danny Searle to put him out at left back but um, given <clears throat> But uh, given the team that we had, the players we had available to us, it ended up being the correct decision. I suppose the reason Dara doesn't get into the team of the season is because he really only started at that when Danny Searle came in. And it took a few games even for uh, Danny to yeah. decide on that. So uh, there's just, you know, he had a very good season, but there's just not enough uh, there to put him over to the Barnett. Mm. Thoughts on maybe Mark Ludden, six goals, eight assists, or Alex Murphy, young Alex Murphy, a goal as well? You want to take that up, Keith? Uh, half a season for Alex Murphy, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, Mark Ludden done brilliantly for Treaty. And again, obviously, they got to a playoff, you know. And uh, um, the only thing with that, with the goals there is Fordham, Fordham in the league were uh, from the penalty spot on two in the playoff. So, um, uh, Keith, do you want to mention who the two lads picked for left back originally? <laughs> we might go there later. Center oh, back. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Center back. We might go there later. Center back. So we've got Ali Gilchrist up at number one. And um, I think this is another one, Gavin, that goes without saying, is it to be fair? I think he's all agreed here, didn't you? Yeah, I think we all agreed on this. And as I said, like, I have to, you know, you were the one, the man I asked first day, Keith. I said, who's Ali Gilchrist? You know? <laughs> and I was like, you know, he goes, who's Ali Gilchrist? And he says to me, and he goes, oh, Gav, he's a, he'll be a good signing for you. Like, and I was like, well, I don't know the guy like, but to be I'm, fair, I'm glad he know. was because I would have looked very yeah. stupid if he wasn't. Yeah, but to be fair, look, you know, he he was superb for us this year. I said that, you know, just so comfortable at centre half, and you know, like I said earlier in the season, the spine of the team was so much stronger this year with Harrington and just Gilchrist in front of him. Won a lot of aerial duos, you know, got a couple of goals from corners. Just his pre- physical presence and his ball distribution is excellent, and um. I, I'd like, you know, he's one of these players. I know he's on the team of the year, but, you know, he's a quietly unassuming type of fella. You know, no, no drama with him, gets on with it. And, you know, quietly got on with his job in the background. And uh, to be fair, he, I hope he stays with us for next season. He's, he's a super centre half, to be fair to him. Mm. I, think, I think he might be all right there. I believe his girlfriend works in Cork. So, uh, yeah. Once he stays with that girlfriend, he'll be with Cork next year. I yeah, think. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think she's in the CUH. I think she's a nurse in the CUH. So I think it depends you're right. on she is, whether, yeah. Yeah, whether, 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 she, whether she stays down or not. But so that'll depend on her job. Like, so it's supposed yeah. to be interesting. Like, but um, I'm sure, yeah, look, I mean, look, if she goes back to Dublin, I'm sure there's another nurse will look after him on Cork if he stays around, you know. <laughs> we'll move on. Keen Coleman was the other choice of centre back, Keith. And uh, I suppose uh, Coleman. You know, he's there a few years now. He's 25 years of age, and I think he's really found a home at Cork City, hasn't he? He started off as a midfielder, yeah. by the way, just to throw it out there. He was a midfielder, really, at the beginning, and before he went to uh, Cork, he was a defensive midfielder at St. Pat's. Like. Yeah, I know I know. last season when uh, we played Cork City, he played in the midfield, you know, and then, yeah. look, he's captain, he's captain Cork City to the league title, you know, and... Uh, Obviously, that was the that was the aim at the start of the season. You know, um, I don't think there's any other uh, set of half in the league that touched the defensive pairing of Gilchrist and Coleman. You know, Gilchrist offers the the um the kind of he has the experience there that he had with Shelburne la, la, uh, a couple of years ago, and um he kind of brought Coleman along with him. You know, so a young pair and kind of a more experienced pair together, perfect match, and uh, it just goes to show you the goals conceded. Bracket for Cork City this season, best defense in the league. Yeah, Sean, was there 
So what's an honourable mention would you throw out to Killian Cantwell? I think so. He was our best defender. Well, aside from Alex Baptiste, but Baptiste has only really been here for the last quarter of the season, so it wouldn't really be fair to include him. <clears throat> yeah, Cantwell was uh, great for us. A superb signing, really. You know, um, uh, it was one of the only good bits of business by Ian Morris to bring him in. But uh, I suppose one of the things you could say about him is that he did have that nasty injury at yeah. the start of the season. He missed a lot of games. And uh, it's... It's difficult, um, I suppose. I suppose it's difficult to gauge his performance because um, we were very defensively shaky for a lot of the season as well. Yeah, yeah. What's interesting is he basically missed most of the time, and Morris uh, was there, I believe, didn't he? As well, he yeah, he back did. Yeah, for a game or something, something like that. Mm. So I suppose we'll give Morris a bit unlucky in those terms, I guess. But on to midfield now, and I'll start with you, Sean, here because you've gone with Niall O'Keefe, twenty-two-year-old midfielder who's. Uh, really become a fulcrum now that Waterford side and uh, you might tell us why he's picked him and uh, what he brings to Waterford in your opinion well I mean he's uh, he's been a, a first team player now for three years which is incredible at his age uh, he's young player of the year now for the club um, he's actually old, he's actually younger I think than um, the player of the year who we'll get on to or sorry no he's older the young player of the year is older than the player of the year we'll get on to that later but um uh, you know, the leadership is really where he excels. I mean, he's captain in the team and he's been captain for... Uh, I think Brian Murphy shared the captain duties, but um, mm. Niall is really offers leadership in midfield. He organises the team so well. You know, he can... Uh, he He's not afraid of a tackle. I mean, you know, just uh, we're very lucky to have him because I know that there are Premier Division teams interested in his signature and uh, the longer we can hold on to him, the better. Yeah. I'll go to you, Keith, for this one. Uh, his midfield partner is another 22-year-old, and that's uh, Aaron Bolger um, of Cork City. Really good player, isn't he? He's uh, nimble, he's quick, he's got good feet. Um, he's really kicked on a Cork, hasn't he, this season? 100%. Obviously, he started his career. He was playing with Sean Grover's too, yeah. and he was kind of on the fringes and went across the water to Cardiff. Didn't work out for him, but he seems to have found his feet at Cork City. And then... Um, Again, he was he was he was ticking them over in the midfield this season, wasn't he? He was he was the engine for them, and uh, you know he broke up play so much, and uh, which is crucial, and um, because you know when when teams are coming towards you, you know particularly the likes of Waterford and with the with the players, the quality players they have, if you can have a player that can break up play like that, it's it's absolutely vital, and uh, it was fantastic for Cork City this season. Uh, there's a couple of honourable mentions as well for other players that Gavin I'm sure will. We'll speak about but um Bulger for us absolutely excellent and uh, he deserves to be in there. Yeah, Gavin, what's his best attribute in your opinion? If you had to pick one attribute, who I I suppose uh, keeping possession of the ball, I would say Keith. Um, you know, to be fair to him, and it's probably definitely that. You know, he just the ball just seems to glue to his feet whichever way he turns. Um, you know, I was. I was surprised how good he was this year with us. Um, I, I like I know there was a bit of him last year, but I just there was one game there this year. I having the Scooby Doo what game it was, and I remember he got a standing ovation from the whole place. We came off with about ten minutes to go. He just definitely rang. wasn't Waterford anyway. Yeah. Was the whole place giving him a standing ovation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he <laughs> ran. <the program. laughs> he was absolutely superb, to be fair, and um, you know, to be and. And apparently, very quiet lad as well, you know. But then, like, I, I, you Gavin, know, can I stop you there. You say yeah, he's, yeah. Quiet. he's quiet, but he's as hard as nails on the pitch, isn't he? Oh, he's not afraid of anybody, Keith. You know, he's not afraid to get stuck into anybody. There's no, like, he'll actually stand up to you. Like, there's no fear there. Uh, he just leaves the, the football to the talking, Keith, you know. Um, but I, I, like, he was just superb. But then, you know, we're talking about honourable mentions. Then, the, the, like the funny thing about it, then is when they played Galway in the cross there, when Galway the player sent off nil all, and he couldn't get near McCormack, you know, in that game. So, I, I, you know, in that sense, then when we're coming up to another level of shows where McCormack's experience came in in that game, because I remember he tried to get the ball off McCormack in over in the corner, and he couldn't get near McCormack. You know, and like they're two very similar players in that sense, but you know, you, you can tell by the experience there between Premier and uh, and, and we say it was a first division, uh, you know, fellow who's won Premier Division 
uh, titles and cups and uh, fellows played in the first division. Like you know, there's there's definitely a bit of a difference between the two lads. But uh, not to be fair, he's been super for us this year. Yeah, it's funny you should mention McCormick. Another honourable mention would probably be David Hurley. Seven goals, seven assists this season. Now I know six of them I think were penalties, or if not all were penalties, but uh, eight assists rather. Sorry, this season. So he's joined the highest assist uh, maker this season, basically, and uh, just a very solid player, Keith midfield, isn't he? Yeah, I like David Hurley. Strong, Every physical. Ever since he came in Cobra, he's a big guy, you know, yeah. and he's the perfect player for John Caulfield. Uh, he loves that hurly burly get it, get stuck in and stuff. And he's good again at set pieces, Keith. Um, from mm-hmm. corner kicks and free kicks. I know a couple of people have have been given a couple of Galway fans have been given out in the last few weeks about I'll oh, take hurly off set pieces. But you know, if he takes ten corners and they score two goals, and you know they're laughing, you know. So um, brilliant player. Um, we slagged him earlier on the season, saying he looked like an Icelandic warrior or whatever. But um, no, you said that. I'd rather take my <laughs> take that off the rim. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love the no, way he says uh, we when it was him. <laughs> is he having that Robbie Keane moment here? Is it? <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think I think I think Hurley he he'd add he'd add anything, and I think do you know what? Um, given he played for Cove, and if Cork went up, God, we didn't. Um, Colin Healy might want to be on the phone to him. Potentially, and now another player. I know Cork City fans were probably watching this and screaming at this Gavin, to be fair. Where's Barry Coffey? 14 goals, four assists this season. Tell them why he's not in the team. Oh, I, I think, unfortunately, for Barry, and the, the reason he's not in the team is because like with the 4 4 2, it just didn't suit him in the centre midfield. Um, and he, he was better, you know, behind Keating and Murphy this year. But in the games like that, when you're I suppose I'm being very critical of the guy, but there was times there, especially the last six, seven games of the season when City kind of faded, you know, when they were kind of getting through games. He didn't do enough for me in those games. And even even though, you know, even though like City still went on and won the league, there was games there where he, like he should have got another probably five or six goals in those last couple of games and he didn't take his chances. And I think that talk that time about him going to Galway and the contract situation there, I remember there over the summer and there was talks about you know, that he was going to Galway and all this. And he, after that, he, he didn't recover for a couple of weeks. He didn't get kind of start getting goals for a couple of weeks. But I think when you're when you're playing that kind of free role... Um, like Does he have Gary to Buck- score goals to impact the game, Gavin? Is he that type of player? But he is that free... You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like Gary Buckley was in the same position for City that time, yeah. and Gary Bu- Gary Buckley was just, you know, I, I, I'm comparing him out to Gary Buckley in the same position, and Gary Buckley would have been much better. Mm. Um, you know, at mm. distribution, scoring, being in the box, setting up play. I think Barry Coffey didn't do enough for that when he had that free role because like Bolger and um, Matt Healy were, were kind of basically in the centre and he had that kind of freedom in front of him and especially when he had Bargreen and Crowley each wing as well, like he, he had loads of options around him but, you know, um, I just thought I could I just thought we could have got more out of him or he could have he could have got more out of himself maybe, like, um, but uh, I think that's, you know, that, that's... He's, only more, more, he's, more, he's more of a flat weight than an espresso, is he? Yeah, yeah, he's... he's um, as far from flat whites, I was rare. No, Keith, Keith but, yeah, had that one saved all day. <laughs> he did, yeah. It's written down in front of his notes there. Look, in front of him there. Get that out of the table there, look. Um, yeah, so yeah, he's more he's more of a latte than a flat white there, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> so, midfield, you went for Bulger and O'Keefe. Now, onto the wings. So, two wingers and two strikers. Hold on, just a second, Keith. A little known fact about Barry Coffey is, of course, from Nina and Tipperary, and another midfielder yeah. in Tipperary. But Gavin, where is Jack Doherty? This is my answer, Sean. <laughs> where is he? Like, where is he? The One fucking... question: Was Jack Doherty in anyone's individual team? Of course, he was. Gavin's, obviously. <laughs> so basically, we're saying it's Keith and Sean's fault, Gavin, that Jack Doherty isn't in this team. He. he... Doherty's in Doherty is to me as Patterson is to Keith Ryan. He's the same love effect there with Keith Ryan as well. Do you know what I mean? You know, I love Patterson. Love, I think. He's an amazing player. But uh, yeah, he's uh, you know Doherty. 
I, I don't know, in, Sean. I don't know. Def- I, don't know I have to say, though, in the defence of the lads not putting Doherty in the team, 21 yeah. appearances this season, to be fair. So a decent chunk at uh, the season he was injured as well, though. Yeah, sure. He was out. He must have been out that time for eight weeks. Like, and and you know that's yeah. that's a lot of that's a lot of time. Like, and I remember at the time we were going through the games. You know, it just it was it wasn't a coincidence, or how would you say, it, or is a coincidence, whichever way you say it. But you know, they dropped points in a lot of those games where they would have probably picked up points or even got draws out of them. Um, but yeah, um, I to be honest with you, when we picked the team, I have to say there was tear shed. I think so, probably. Uh, moving on to the wing, we'll move on to the left wing. And um, surprise, surprise, it's 22-year-old Phoenix Patterson, would you believe? Yeah, how did he get in the team, lads? I don't know. 22 goals this season. Seven assists. By the way... That's key, he'll tell you. By the way... Oh, he will in a minute. None of his goals are penalties. So to score 22 goals in all competitions, like I think it's 20, 17 in the league, is it? Or 20 in the league, Sean? I think he only scored two goals in the cup, so yeah, yeah, yeah twenty in yeah. the league. Anyway, twenty-two in all competitions, which is a fact. But none, none of them are penalties, which is just extremely impressive. And I'll actually let Key talk about him here. Oh, thanks. Um, uh, look, Danny, Sarah, Waterford. What, like Sean's gonna, Sean's gonna go mad because we're t- we keep talking Patterson up, don't we, Sean? And like, I mean. The more we talk him up, the more <laughs> other clubs are going to be. And I'm sure other clubs are looking at him. And I'm sure he could probably play a lower league across the water as well. So, uh, look, I'll let Sean talk about him because he's seen him more than me this season, you know. And, uh, <laughs> fantastic, uh, fantastic. Sean, take it away. Well, you know, as you mentioned, um, across the water, yeah, our friends over in Fleetwood are definitely interested in him. And uh, it, it would be sad to see him go. He is on a multi-year contract, so if 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 he does go, we will get a fee for him. We get some form of compensation. But if he does go, I can't hold it against him. He's been absolutely phenomenal since he joined us. I mean, you know, uh, you, you talk about a goal of the season competition for the league. Phoenix Patterson could have his own goal of the season competition. He just scored so many. I mean, three identical free kicks there in recent weeks that were, you know, all amazing. What was that brilliant that, goal, Sean? The one at the edge of the area. Who was that against? Uh, against Dundalk. That the was cup. Dundalk. So he did that in a brilliant in a big game against the team in, that a big game. in the Premier Division. Mm, absolutely. And uh, again, uh, last weekend against Treaty, he scored another you know brilliant curling effort. He doesn't so, score um, tap ins though, does he? Does anyone ever see him score tap ins? Very rarely. No. Well, funny enough, his first goal was a tap in against Bowes. <laughs> I remember it actually. Um, it was like you remember because he doesn't really score tappings. Yeah, I remember. I remember it because I thought he wasn't announced. Actually, he, he just showed up on the. <laughs> he just showed up on the day. How are these lads? Team sheets. This fellow called Phoenix. Yeah, and um, anyway, I I thought to myself, you know, okay, this fella has an unusual name. He'd probably be really good or really bad, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, this season. You know, just um, to score 22 goals and well, he's kind of an inside forward as opposed to a winger, but to not yeah. be a striker and to score 22 goals off from plays, but well, mm. not off from play. So, and the funny thing with him that. as well, like, um, I'll even chime in here a little bit, but he often mm. picks it up from deep and runs the people as well. So, you know what I mean? He's not just a finisher mm. either. That's the funny thing with him, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I could talk all day about it. I mean, he's just you know, first name on the team sheet, really, when uh, I had this assignment. So, um you know, play. I mean, I really hope we hold on to him, or, or at least he has a successful career over in England, because it looks like he he won't be here for long. I'll I'll stick with you, Sean. The right wing junior. Now, junior scored ten goals, mm. only the ten goals and ten assists. Uh, pretty poor compared to Phoenix Flatters. <laughs> Tell me about him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, I remember. Um, it, well, it's the two players that we did really well to hold on to. They were announced. At the start of the season, that we had them on multi-year deals, like like um, Phoenix Junior is also here on a multi-year deal, and he's also attracting interest from our friends across the water. But um, I mean, you know, he, he does get a bit overshadowed by Phoenix, I suppose, because um, one of the, some of the things he does, like he holds on to the ball too long sometimes, and um, he he you know he struggles with the more physical opponents. You know, he gets bullied off the ball sometimes, but. Uh, when he gets the ball at his feet, like you know, he's capable of beating three or four lads to get inside the box and put the ball in the back of the net. That's really exciting to watch. I mean, again, uh, you know, big player for us since last season, and uh, you know, he scored. He's his technique is incredible, 
Mm. Uh, you know, he just he's, he's a really he, he is probably as exciting as Phoenix when he gets the ball in space because you don't know what he's going to do with it. So, uh, you know, uh, a deserved inclusion in the team of the season. Yeah, I mean, 30 go- 32 goals between the two of them and none of them are strikers. And speaking of strikers up front and... Uh, this Sorry, move on. I think, I think people will see why we didn't pick Coffey. Coffey's a more attacking player, so with the two wingers, yeah, you need two guys that would sit in front of the back four to protect them as well. So you, you can see why Coffey wasn't included, I suppose. Yeah. Um, this guy was arguably the surprise of the season, Keith. Stephen Walsh. Uh, 17 goals this season for Galway United. Didn't see that coming. Fantastic. Fantastic. And obviously he was he, he's normally a left back or whatever. And Caulfield threw him into the into the attacking role and uh, he's flourished for them, you know. He kind of carried Galway a little bit this season because a lot of their other big players like Wilson Waweru and um they kind of didn't provide what Caulfield wanted them to provide, you know. So um yeah, Stephen Walsh, you know, all the goals. And he's, again, he's a typical John Caulfield player. Powerful. He's strong, mm-hmm. holds the ball up. And uh, he, de- he couldn't be not in the team this season. And um, the lads wanted to put him in at left back. Just putting it out there. But obviously, he hasn't played <laughs> left back this season. Um, so, um, there are other players that we could mention. But Stephen Walsh... Given that he's, as I said already, he's probably play, he's probably more uh, accustomed to playing left back and uh, to be thrown in deep end like that and score uh, 17 goals, was it you said? Uh, 16, 16, actually. 16. I made a mistake, yeah. 16, yeah. And we put him yeah, out of the team, so. so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, gone. Yeah, but uh, now we'll mention other players as well, but mm. uh, Steve Mulch, um, he's strong, he'll hold the ball up well, and he will, um, the player that we're going to mention in a minute. He'll uh, he'll partner he'll partner well in any team with him. Rory Keating, Gavin, second striker, thirteen goals this season, five assists. But you'd argue he offers a lot more in his game than just the goals as well, doesn't he? Yeah, and I like if anybody to you know are on to me about the matches and they go on about him, like I'm going to get the height of abuse about this to be like, oh, he's not great, he's not this. But for me, he I thought he was the difference again for City this year. His work rate was phenomenal and. You know, big uses big Diego Costa up front for us. You know, it's a um, but uh, just link player, superb scores goals, sets up play, uh, very greedy as well. But I don't think that's a bad thing with him. Um, you know, he just wanted goals, 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 and I can see why Colin Healy brought him to City. You know, when you look at the way the season ended or throughout the season, I was just I was a favor from early early days with him and. He, as I said before, but I'm a very my player. Some people didn't like him at all and thought he was a bit of a, you know, a bit of a spoof or a bit of an Egypt. But um, I thought he was superb for us this year. And I think he was a huge reason why we won the league this year. You know, in there was games there that were tight. I remember, I remember the Cove game there. It was the cup game. Was it? He got the only goal. I think or was it was the league game where we won two one down there and. They get like obviously Cove up their game for that for those for those games obviously because it was a local derby but the games were tight and Cove weren't giving away much but just that bit of you know bit of um would you say just a bit of I wouldn't say experience like but just he, he just craft. knew what to do at the right times yeah <laughs> he just yeah a bit of craftiness in his head just knew what to do at the right times and when to pull away and just used his physical strength and you know his his ability on the ball I really like him I have to say and uh, that's a bit of pace about him Gavin doesn't he oh he's fast as well Keith to be honest for for a big fella he's actually quite quick and when he runs with the ball because he's he's quite physical as well he's you know he, he's I call him Rory Rice because he reminds me of Declan Rice with the hair and everything like but no, he's a big physical unit. He's a big fella, like, and he's strong as well. He's quite well built up top, and he was well able to hold off players. And um, you know, to be fair, Keen Murphy had a super season as well. But I just think, in terms of quality, Rory Keating's quality wise, he's a better player than Keen Murphy. Yeah, Sean, I think it might have been a mistake that Galway let him go to Cork. Well, it could have been. I mean, you know, uh, as Gavin said, like that that work. It would have been John Coffey as an ideal player. And, uh, you know, well, I suppose at the end it wasn't fine margins. But for a while, you know, yeah. Galway were just just there. And, you know, maybe that bit of, maybe Rory Keating would have suited John Caulfield more and uh, contributed to a few wins like he did for Cork. 
Yeah, interesting. Now, there's going to be Treaty fans absolutely screaming, throwing their cups against the wall, um, et cetera, et cetera. End the current 14 league goals, 19 in all competitions, including a hat trick in the cup. Explain yourself, lads. I did have him in my team, just, <laughs> just, just so you know. Sean, you I can sit back. Sean, you can yeah. sit back, relax. Keith and Gavin. Yeah. I'd just say Keating, he was superb and Walsh for Galway was superb. So you're going to only pick two when we pick 4-4-2. Four, four, it's like me picking Jack Doherty. So I'm sorry, Mark Lodden, my apologies, but Jack Doherty was in there before you anyway. Go on, Keith, you can talk. He's talking about Ender Curran here, actually. So um... He got out that well, didn't he? <laughs> oh, he said Mark Lodden, didn't he? Yeah, you dope. He did, <laughs> yeah. he did. <laughs> that listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> Treaty fans will be throwing their cups at the wall or whatever. Mm. He did really well for for um for Treaty this season. Because you'd um, argue if he dragged them into the playoffs. You'd argue, wouldn't you? Well, you could argue also Wexford didn't do so well. So, like, I mean, Treaty didn't really have to do much. Certainly in the middle of the summer, in terms of. Uh, getting results, you know, because Wexford were really poor and it all kind of matched with Jack Doherty being injured and stuff like that. But Ender Ender's probably he's he's probably the 11, 11 and a half man mm. in the team. You know, mm. he, he's he's that close. I just mm. think Stephen Walsh, um Galway were that bit higher than 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 uh than Treaty and I think I think uh, another player that needs a mention is Eddie Amo as well and Galway would be probably mm-hmm. um, throwing their toys out of the cram the fact that they let him go as well you know would he have would he have scored goals that brought them closer to to Cork and Waterford I don't know but yeah and the current very unlucky a um, couple of penalties thrown in there and he, it's a bit like Bulger gone to Cork Cork suits Bulger Treaty seems to suit end the current so um, yeah. you know fair due soon but uh, you know mm. sorry end it not in our team. Well, the other player I'll mention as well, I suppose, honourable mention, but probably harder to get into the side is uh, Elua. It's 11 goals for Athlone and uh, yeah. six assists this season. Um, 21-year-old as well. Difficult to see Athlone keeping him, but definitely deserves a mention, doesn't he, lads? Can I say something? Yeah, like when you're coming there to, you know, what's the end of current. Like when he when I was on it, we were on about Elua at that time when he played against City. And that's the difference. You know, where I'm looking at from a City point of view is that Elua, when I saw him against City, he was a threat. Whereas I didn't see, you know, with all due respect in the current, he never looked like, you know, when I seen him, it was like, okay, I didn't go T, lads, you know, fuck your man in the current there. Or, you know, he was a threat to us. Whereas Elua was a threat to us. And it's it's the players on the other teams when you're, you're trying to look at fellas we are picking up from other teams just saying oh, I'd like him on my team or this fella looks decent or this fella impressed against us today and uh, you know Elua really impressed me when he came down to the cross this year mm. Well in fairness though like um, all these players you mentioned that didn't get in the team just because you didn't get in the team doesn't mean that these players haven't performed well this season like that oh, has to be said as well that like there's been really good performers there and we've mentioned them lads that haven't gotten the team even Alex Murphy for pretty much half a season was excellent for Galway and probably a massive loss but uh, it's an interesting team it's 4-4-2 I'll just go through it again David Harrington and Gold Cork City Toon Misha is that right? I can never get his uh, first name right I, yeah, I think he says Toon Misha himself Toon Misha Sobo Ali at right back <laughs> Dylan Barnett at left back Ali Gilchrist and Keane Coleman at centre back Aaron Bulger midfield Niall O'Keefe centre midfield Phoenix Patterson, left wing, junior right wing. We have the strikers of Stephen Walsh and Rory Keating. So it's an interesting team. Be interesting to see what people actually think of the team. No doubt people will be screaming at some of the names he mentioned that they should be in the team, this, that, and the other. But it'll be interesting to see if other people come up actually with other players that they think might have been contenders for the team and even honorable mentions. So make sure they I let think, them know. Yeah, Luke Dennison, Keith, uh, as goalkeeper, he's had a great season. You know, no one's going to overtake Dave Harkin, yeah. but. Luke Dennison would definitely be a would be a sub goalkeeper. Definitely, I think he's had a good season. Yeah, no, he has absolutely, and uh, obviously we're not done yet because we're going to name our player of the year and manager of the year. And what I'll do is I'll go through these individually, pick your player of the year and your manager of the year, and then by the end we'll see who gets the most votes and who wins essentially. But I'll start with you, Gavin. Player of the year, manager of the year. Uh, David Harrington for us and Colin Healy, definitely. Keith. 
Phoenix Patterson, player of the year. Um, I think he was excellent. Uh, there's no one will touch him uh, this season. And I think he'll, he'll be recognised as well with uh, the league awards as well. I think I think he got the first division player of the year. And Colin Healy, I think what Colin Healy did this season, you know, fantastic. Uh, Cork have reached the promised land again. Um, but, a, but a shout out to Tommy Barrett. What a season he's had with Treaty. Um, fourth place or fifth place finish playoffs again. Yeah, uh, for a second semi final. And a cup semi final. Yeah. Um, he really he really had them players uh, playing quite well over different areas of the season. So, um, but Colin Healy, title winner. Brilliant. Who did you go for, Sean? Uh, player of the year, Phoenix Patterson. It was a. Uh... Uh, definitely the easiest player of the year uh, I've had for I've had to pick when uh, looking back at a Watford season. Uh, you know, just phenomenal. There's nothing really I can say that hasn't already been said, but um, you know, just an outstanding player. Um, and for manager of the year, I did go for Tommy Barrett. Uh, winning the league with Cork City, especially after enduring a rough first season, yeah, it was definitely an impressive achievement for Colin Healy. Yeah, and. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how he gets on in the Premier Division, but um, I think I think he could, um, you know, he looks like he has the, the right stuff in order to make success as a manager there down in Cork. But um, Tommy Barrett, I think for for looking at perspective from where Treaty are and where they've come from mm. uh, and what they've achieved this season, it's really yeah, phenomenal to get to a cup semi final in their second year of existence and a second consecutive playoff run, you know, and. Uh, he, he knows his stuff like he, he really I mean we were a bit naive in the second leg of the RSC but going into a game four and down most people would just give up but uh, you know he really gave it a right go and almost it almost paid off uh, so you know uh, I'd be very I suppose if you're a treaty fan you know you'd be very optimistic for the third season especially when the first division isn't going to be as strong as it was this year so uh, uh, it'll certainly be very interesting to see how they progress so our overall player of the year is Phoenix Patterson and our overall manager of the year is Colin Healy. So fantastic stuff, lads. That was brilliant, lads. I must mention, though, before we go, that this video will be out after the actual playoff final as such. So some of the stats might change. So if people are in the comments saying, oh, Phoenix Patterson got 24 goals or whatever it is, it's because by the time we've done this video on the Waterford, uh, Galway match hasn't been played yet. So people, just so they know that, um, that's about it guys thanks for coming on really enjoyed that uh, good team um, I like the way I didn't pick the team as well so uh, any abuse Just look on Friday the lads. Uh, <laughs> any abuse can go to the three lads because I didn't pick the team <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought I'd mention that guys so uh, thanks very much please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hit your bell notification button if you want to list your full team of the year let us know in the comments as well and uh, anything we've mentioned there etc but uh once again, thanks, lads. That was brilliant. Any of those players want to send Cheers. a brown envelope? You can, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still waiting yeah. on uh, the jersey too from Jack. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> he said he'd send it after he's back from his holiday. Great, thanks. <laughs>